Why would Darth Plagueis the Wise have made for a terrible emperor? Greetings, curious acolytes of the Force, and welcome back to our ever-expanding archives. Darth Plagueis the Wise was, for many, just another Sith Lord in the Bainite lineage leading up to Darth Sidious, who would become the culmination of the Sith Rule of Two. However, many seem to forget that Plagueis was incredibly close to actually becoming the Galactic Emperor had it not been for Sidious's betrayal. In the Darth Plagueis novelization, we get to have an innate look at Plagueis's personal life and become familiar familiar with who he was at his very core, what his thoughts were like, and how he dealt with his plans and the enemies around him. We also get to see the early years and training of Sheev Palpatine, who would eventually rise up to kill his master. While Darth Plagueis was indeed a powerful and an intelligent Sith, we have actually concluded upon further research that he would have absolutely failed as Emperor. Our reasoning comes down to several personality traits of his, as well as some destructive tendencies that he exhibits which would have ultimately cost him his rule, and maybe the entire Empire itself. So, come along with us today, my friends and fellow students, as we open up this holocron and peer into an alternate universe where Darth Plagueis became the Emperor, and ultimately crashed and burned. We know that this is a pretty bold claim, as in the novelization for Darth Plagueis, we see the Dark Lord expertly navigating around the galaxy's social hierarchy like a shark looking for food. He is a shrewd businessman with a network of spies on every corner of the galaxy. When we find him, Plagueis is far more than just a Sith or even a scientist. His alter ego life as the head chairman of Damask Holdings has already given him so much power that he might have succeeded in subjugating the galaxy, even if Plagueis did not have the Force. He had near complete control over the intergalactic banking clan. He had pockets of some of the most powerful politicians in the Senate, and he was about to almost literally own the deed to the world of Naboo and their plasma export. Plagueis was even rubbing elbows with the Jedi and was working his manipulation on Jedi Master sifo Dyas to start the building of the clone army. He had just freshly killed his master, another notable and powerful Sith in Darth Tenebris, and he had now taken the mantle of the Dark Lord of the Sith. What's unique about Plagueis at this point in time is he wasn't even really concerned in taking on an apprentice, as he assumed that the Sith stopped with him an idea that we will explore later. He was now making plans to bring to fruition the Revenge of the Sith, and the only thing that stood in his way was a few political rivals and some roadblocks in his public life. However, that was all soon to be taken care of, with just a few more payoffs and his work behind the scenes in his Sith alchemy. By all accounts, Plagueis had the makings to be the next Emperor, and it would have come true had he not started getting sloppy. Here is the problem with all of this so far. Plagueis had let all of these facts go to his head. After all, he was a member of the Moon species. Moons, all of whom fostered an elite classist mindset and believed that they were, in effect, the best species in the galaxy, the most refined and intelligent. They believed that they were far more intelligent than a normal being, cunning and powerful people, and the most powerful people group of this time. The IBC, that is, the Intergalactic Banking Clan, had been steadily growing in power for the past several hundred years, which would absolutely play in their advantage when tensions were rising with the Republic and the Trade Federation, and many other systems that would later form the Separatist Alliance, and the Intergalactic Banking Clan was profiting off of all of this conflict. In fact, the best thing that could have happened financially for them was for war to break out and war would indeed commence. What's insane is that the banking clan even had dealings with the Hutt during this time period. With Plagueis at the head of all of this, his ego began to inflate and he started looking down on people and other species. Plagueis' fatal flaw was that he held a superior mentality, placing his faith in the fact that he was simply too smart and too powerful to lose. He began to flex this idea when he was making dealings with the King of Naboo and supporting the political party that was voting for Naboo to join the Republic in an effort that they could generate revenue from their plasma exports. The party that was opposing this was none other than Kasinga Palpatine, the father of Sheev Palpatine. He believed that Naboo should maintain their independence at all costs from the Republic, and many rivals from his side of things began to send threats to Plagueis and the rest of the moons in Damask Holdings, in an effort that they would pull out of the politics going on on Naboo. Of course, Plagueis refused this and thought he was perfectly safe in doing so. He would be proven wrong when during an underground party, he and his cohorts would all be attacked by highly trained, skilled assassins, some of the finest assassins in all of the galaxy, 
Plagueis would survive this encounter through his use of the dark side, but he had actually been taken by surprise and ended up having his throat slit and half of his face sliped off from the assassin's weapons. He survived, but barely now having to use a respirator mask for the rest of his life. Plagueis had gotten sloppy, he didn't tie up his loose ends, and didn't take care of his rivals when he should have and when he had the chance. He did indeed get revenge on the man who ordered the assassination, but by that point, it was simply too late, the damage was done, and it was because of this respirator mask that his death would come at the hands of his apprentice much later. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Anyway, Plagueis' political opponents posed more of a threat to him than he initially realized, and so he began to act somewhat paranoid and soon became a recluse. He shut himself in his laboratory and worked day and night on his midichlorian projects, pushing all the empire building work and political subterfuge to none other than Sidious, his apprentice. With the young Palpatine now being the one in charge of everything going on in the outside world, this would naturally give him all the power he needed. Now, it was Palpatine who was talking to the network of spies. It was Palpatine who was in charge of speaking to the Viceroy of the Trade Federation. In fact, Sidious at one point began to grow impatient and soon felt angry as he was starting to feel as though he was just Plagueis' errand boy rather than his partner and Sith apprentice. But this was a blessing in disguise, as Palpatine was now in direct control of everything that the Sith had built up to heretofore. As for Plagueis though, he was none the wiser that he had just handed his overly ambitious apprentice the keys to their future. Once again, Plagueis was sloppy. He knew full well how ambitious Palpatine was and should have known that this young apprentice would follow in the footsteps of the Rule of Two, like every apprentice attempted before him. Plagueis had tried to put trust in his protege, but that trust was entirely misplaced. He really assumed that somehow someone like Chief Palpatine was comfortable forever living in Plagueis' shadow, always being the servant. Plagueis' plan was literally for Palpatine to do all the political work, get elected as Chancellor, then elect Plagueis as Co-Chancellor. Plagueis' long-term plan was then for him to rise up after the Jedi Purge and become the galaxy's immortal emperor as he had assumed that by then he would be too powerful to contend with. However, two Sith attempting to share power is a recipe for disaster. Surely, Plagueis should have known this the whole time Sidious had been training Maul to be his personal assassin, even though Plagueis knew full well that Maul was just an assassin and not Sidious's true apprentice, he still allowed this showing that he was completely blind to all of Palpatine's machination. So now we have three solid reasons why Plagueis would have made a terrible emperor. One, he doesn't cover all of his bases. Had Order 66 happened, and he indeed managed to turn Anakin to the dark side and have him wipe out all of the Jedi, he wouldn't have been as thorough as Sidious was with setting up the Inquisitors and seeking Vader after them. And despite having total control of the IBC by that point, all the systems of the Outer Rim, and maybe even the Mid Rim would suffer total economic collapse, as Plagueis would only deem certain systems worthy of financial support, letting the rest of the galaxy rot. Whatever systems that he would say were better than others, and better races than others, the speciesism in Plagueis' empire would have been greater than Sidious's, inciting even more recruits into the hands of the Rebel Alliance. And speaking of the Rebels, they would have have posed an enormous problem for Plagueis, which brings us to number two. Plagueis buries his head in the sand and pushes his responsibilities onto others. Let's say that Plagueis did keep Palpatine around and didn't replace him with Vader. He would still be using Sidious as his errand boy, and if he hadn't been killed by Palpatine beforehand, then his death would surely be coming later. But more than that, the very beginning of the Empire was absolute chaos. There was a lot to do in a very short amount of time. And when Palpatine became Emperor, he had to move very quickly. As soon as Anakin turned to the dark side, then Operation Nightfall had to happen, as Mace Windu would not report in to the rest of the Jedi. As soon as Operation Nightfall was underway, Order 66 had to be executed. Briefly after that, they would have to take care of the Separatist leaders, reform the Galactic Senate, reorganize the entire Republic into the Empire, and quell any uprisings of rebellions from independent systems, all while ensuring the total annihilation of the Jedi. Plagueis could not handle a single assassination attempt on his life before pretty much going into hiding and forcing Sidious to do all of his public work. There is no way Plagueis would have been 
been able to execute everything that was necessary in the brief amount of time that his apprentice would. He would call certain tasks beneath him, and his refusal to do them would lead to disastrous circumstances. With all this knowledge, could we even imagine how Plagueis would have handled something like the Rebellion? Working off the previous assumption of him not instating Inquisitors, the Rebels would be led by Jedi Remnants, and the Galactic Civil War would have been handled very differently possibly even leading to a swift alliance victory. And finally, our last reason, Plagueis vastly underestimates his enemies, especially the ones closest to him. Darth Sidious' betrayal should have been seen coming at a parsec away. Plagueis had mistreated Sidious' position as his apprentice, and was giving him far too much power in their empire. Sooner or later, Sidious would clearly see his master's weakness and incompetence when conducting the empire, and when confronting the rebellion. And if the rebellion didn't destroy Plagueis first, than his apprentice certainly would have. That is all not to bash on Darth Plagueis too much, as without Darth Plagueis, we would have never had Darth Sidious. And while it is fascinating that Darth Plagueis was one of the architects and engineers of the rule of two, and the culmination of a Sith Empire, he was never meant to rule it, and would have done a poor job in doing so. But anyway, my friends, this is our reasoning behind why Darth Plagueis would have failed as Emperor. But now we want to hear your thoughts, and if you agree with our assessment. Do you think that Darth Plagueis would have made for a great Emperor, a foolish Emperor, or a completely disastrous one? Let us know your thoughts down below, Acolytes. And as always, may the Force be with you, and we hope to hear from you soon.